hello and welcome back and it's time for another Plex Media Server test and today we are going to be utilising the arguably more modestly powered and modestly priced Asus Store Drive Store Pro series. This is the 4 bay we're using today, the Asus Store um, Pro 4. We can go there and scroll to the bottom. You can see there it utilizes uh, the processor there. It's an ARM based processor and it arrives with 2 gig of memory. So again, this is a system that unlike a lot of the more aggressive Intels and more aggressive um, x86 based processors that we talk about, this is a system that utilizes an ARM, a 64 bit ARM processor, but an ARM nonetheless. Now, few things straight off the bat. We are using the same files we always use. We'll be running a few movie tests and of course we will be looking at these files here, the jellyfish files you can see here on screen that scale in size. It's the same 30 second file but sometimes in 1080p, sometimes in 4K, sometimes in HEVC, some in 10 bit media going all the way up to 400 megabit 4K UHD HEVC H.265 10 bit media at 1.4 gig for 30 seconds. So, what I'm saying is, I will be amazed if it's able to play most of these files. Why is that? Well, even though Asus Store do state that this system can transcode 4K media, and indeed it can, it can do it though with its own native media player known as the Looks Good Video Player. It can play back. 4K H.265 uh, transcode or, um, where it changes the file for playback on here. However, Plex Media Server, although this particular Plex Media Server that we're utilizing today is using Plex Pass, and if we look at the settings, you're able to see that we have enabled in the encoder settings, let's find it there in the transcoder settings, we have enabled make my CPU hurt. This is a non GPU equipped NAS. That is to say it doesn't have integrated graphics and it's going to be utilizing raw power. And even now with the system running, we're able to see that it is going to be already utilizing a decent old chunk of memory to keep things running for us today. So if we go into more there, we wanna go into the NAS itself. You can see here at the bottom that if we go into the resource monitor, bring it over there, we're already using quite a substantial amount of memory there on the system. So there is our memory utilization there on screen. It seems a pinch lower on Plex than it does on the system. They're reporting system utilization at 33% there, whereas this one is reporting utilization at a little over 60. So maybe that'll even out later on. But for now, what we wanna do is make our way into Plex Media Server. We've disabled all of the background media apps and surveillance to make sure that none of these can be perceived to be the reason for any good or bad performance. And we're gonna make our way into Plex Media Server. You can see the IP there that the NAS is on. You can see the IP that Plex is on. It's the same Plex server. And in today's video, just like we've always done before, we're gonna be running the same media files one by one. So the first file we always use, make sure the laptop is muted, is the matrix. Again, usual sort of metadata scraping, we can thank Plex for that, but let's go ahead and play this file immediately. We get the um, a quality level there on screen, we're using original quality. Um, you could largely ignore this first top window here for bandwidth. That's just going to be network activity. We really want to focus on CPU and memory utilization. So again, we're just going to flick along. It's going to play about that file nice and easy, nice and simple, playing all the way through. It's a great film. It's playing fine. This is a 720p HD file. So why don't we have a little play with transcoder? Let's bring it down to a 480p version. So again, bringing it in, that's 480p. Still 1.5 megabit per second. We've seen tiny spikes there on the utilization of memory, but still we can skip along nice and easy. And again, as far as Plex Media Service concerned, and yes, this is over a local area network settings. So this is gonna be if the NAS is in your home and you're running some smart TVs dotted around, this is absolutely fine to be able to skip through there. So now we're gonna go for something a tad more aggressive at 240p. Let that do its job. We're probably gonna see the CPU over here uh, spike up a little bit. Let's have a little look. Yeah, there's our spike there on screen. So again, it's, ooh, it's having difficulty there. It took a little longer than we would have liked to transcode that file. And remember, that's because we are using that ARM and Plex isn't really 
supposed to be used in this aggressive fashion with an ARM processor, at least in transcoding. In terms of general playback, it's absolutely fine. But again, even flicking through the file, we can see the utilization there being pretty hard done by. And again, the resolution's dropped in line with the transcode that we're trying to do. But I think just to end things, let's end it on the lowest transcode we can go from. So this is a 720p, 1.5 megabits per second file being transferred into a 160p, 0.2 megabits per second file. It's pretty low end, if I'm honest. You can see there, obviously, this is for when your data connection and your bandwidth is incredibly low. Uh, and you're, if you're using a device with an incredibly small screen, then you might use this level of transcoding. But again, very hard going there by the NAS. I'm still impressed it did it, but again, that's a lot of utilization very early on in our tests. But again, this is a very budget NAS. So let's come out of that there. I say very budget, it's just affordable. Um, so next, let's go into Little Shop of Horrors, another absolute stone cold classic, 1080p file this time. We can go ahead and play that file there. And again, we'll get the resolution on screen. So 1.9 megabits per second, 1080p HD file, H.264 for that matter. And again, Flick along, absolutely fine. We can scroll along, we can, you know, nice and easy. And again, absolutely fine. We can see the NAS is spiking a little bit. If we go into uh, the system's own resource settings, I'll be interested to see what the difference is. But again, it's relative. It's still not identical, quite strangely. But um, again, not too shabby. Let's go back then, go and make our way back into Plex. So for now, let's do a transcode. This time we're going to transcode it automatically using Plex's own um, version where it basically picks the best possible transcode um, and again we're seeing quite a fantastically high spike early doors and again this is only going to get harder as the test wears on you can see there the system and it's all Plex Media Server doing that work there if we make our way along that chart a little closer we can see Plex Media Server is making up the kind of lion's share of that consumption and I don't think that automatic transcoder is going to do it for us. It's just getting ready. But again, we've really maxed out that CPU load on this system. And again, let's not be too hard on this NAS. It is a Realtek NAS. It is designed for budget utilization. And you shouldn't really expect high-end transcoding on this. So let's make our way down to 480p this time. So it's going to transcode that file from 1080p. Um, down to 480 and again we're going to have a little bit of a weight our hands on our hands by the look of it while the system cpu really just takes its sweet sweet time and again when we've tested little shop we are going to be moving on to some of those particularly high-end jellyfish files that we've used before and i think although this nas might play a number of these 1080p and 4k files native i think it uh, you know 8.264 I think we're going to see some real struggle when it comes to the H.265 utilization you can see the dashboard is reporting uh, remote access problems there as well while the NAS is starting to fight back and not respond as quickly as Plex might like but it's still playing the file it's still playing the file there and again if we skip forward chances are we're going to see that same delay once again while the system gets ready to sort of let us know what's happening but i would struggle to call this a success changing this 1080p to 480p file and i think right now i think when we should give up the ghost on this file because i think we're consistently seeing what it's going to be doing here that even when it plays this file you're not going to be able to fast forward or kind of skip scenes or anything like that it's able to play and it is able to transcode but we are using a phenomenal amount of system resources. Again, just to put that into perspective, we are using 100% of the system resources to do this job, which means if you're doing this, the NAS isn't really going to be doing much else in the background, and it's really going to hamper performance on other things. You can see even the responsiveness has kind of lowered a little bit there. So let's come out of... Um, Little Shop of Horrors there, we're going to let the CPU drop down as it will automatically do. And now we're going to look at those test files. Now let's zoom in a little bit here, uh, just to talk a little bit about H.265 and H.264. Now, H.264 
is uh, can be played natively by pretty much any NAS, including the drive store. Doesn't require any transcoding. It will play fine. The real barrier here is HEVC, otherwise known as H.264, H.26, oh, sorry, H.265 even. H.265 is a, a newer compression technique for making larger files even smaller and playback better. Um, but due to licensing and patent problems, a lot of um, multimedia hardware manufacturers do not include the HEVC license. Uh, and because H.264 is a single license, single patent, real easy, HEVC is a great deal more complex. And then finally, we have HEVC 10-bit. Now, HEVC 10-bit is HDR. It is higher end quality there. And ultimately, as we go through this list, you're going to see the megabits per second, which is kind of the, uh, the compression frame rate of the movie files, uh, well, how much data is in there. And it's going to get larger and larger, and then HD will give way to 4K, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to that giant file at the end. We're not going to test them all, but we're going to test a lot of them. So, let's start easy, a 3 megabits per second HD um, H.264 file there. So let's go ahead and play that file, nice and easy. And again, plays absolutely fine, buffering immediate there at the bottom. And again, these are 30 second files. We needed to make sure we have the same file in multiple versions and this is the only way we could do it. But again, skipping forward nice and easily. I'm not gonna do any transcoding here because I think with these files, there's gonna be a lot of forced transcoding. So we can come out there, go into the same file, but this time as HEVC. Bear in mind, remember, this was the tiny bump here for playing back that file natively. Now we're gonna look at the file that's gonna need to be changed and converted. As you can see, it automatically converts the file straight away. Now we're gonna see that same 1080p file having to be converted automatically and struggling early doors, as we can see there. It's gonna play it. But again, when it plays it and how the playback is going to be faster than the system, you know, caching and um, transcoding that file readily, because it's a non-GPU equipped CPU, no embedded graphics, or anything like that. Eventually, when this does play back this file, that playback is going to be so much faster than this that it will, yeah, there you go, it's kicked us out anyway, it wasn't even able to do, do it. So next we can go into the HEVC variant um, of 10-bit or HDR. As you can see, it's gone down there. It's coming up. Oh man, I've got a sore throat today. Really sorry guys if my throat sounds incredibly gravelly while I'm talking to you. Um, have a look there. And again, it's converting, but not really that well. And again, I think we are gonna see this system kick us out. And again, for those of you watching this thinking, oh, this means this NAS drive's no good, please, 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 you got to remain relative. This is a system that is using very modest hardware. That is why it arrives at that modest price tag. It is actually doing a slightly better job, but it's still kicked out. So just so we know what we're doing here, let's focus squarely on these H.264 files. Let's only play the H.264 files just to see the CPU spikes each time. So this is gonna be the 10-bit version of H.264. And remember the spike we saw before was around 10%. Uh, that spike's a little higher, but the caching's absolutely fine and it's gone all the way through. So let's go for the next H.264. This is a 30 megabits per second file. So we'll try and keep all of these little spikes on screen simultaneously so we can see, as we can see, the larger the file, the larger the resources that are now being consumed to play back the file. So we'll come back there, but it still managed to cache the whole file. Absolutely fine. Now we're gonna make our way into a bigger one. This is a 100 megabit uh, 1080p file. So once again, let's go there. Make sure you can see that on screen. It is still the original format. Probably gonna see a little bit more struggle. That's what we're seeing here. We're seeing that spike higher. It's still caching, but this time the cache hasn't massively outrun playback the way it did before. And if anything, it's gonna potentially overrun it. Look, and there's even frame rate issues there as we're going up. So again, I'm still impressed that Plex has been able to play these 1080p files native, but it's a real struggle. And I think this is kind of the last time we're gonna see H.264 playing uh, smoothly there. 
So now we're going to make our way into 4K. This is a 120 megabits per second 4K UHD H.264 file. So again, let's bring up the dial, bring up the zoom. And again, we are seeing some real struggle here. We are seeing it um, ca cache that file there. And as uh, predicted, the transcoding, um, not even transcoding, the playback and handling of these media files is getting harder each time. Even the uh, resource monitor is starting to judder a little bit as the system is struggling to provide this information for us. This has already far exceeded my expectations for a NAS at this point. Um, so I'm still impressed by it. But I think at this point, we have to deduce that 4K on this system, in Plex even natively with no transcoding, is just not an option. The final one here, the 200 megabits per second file there. Let's bring that up. As we see, we're at the 200 megabits. We're almost certainly going to see the CPU spike uh, do something absolutely horrendous. We're even seeing memory spikes being utilized quite a lot with these 4Ks in a way that wasn't present before. But again, if we have a look, I think we're not going to get lucky here. Even if it does manage to cache a little bit further, playback would massively exceed what we're seeing here on screen. And I think we can call that one a foul. We'll end this on the largest file just for the hell of it, just to see with automated transcoding if this NAS has got enough just fumes left in the tank to play back this file and we can go ahead and we can even play this file automatically into the quality we want to watch but we're going to have to go into the option there it's going to convert automatically so again this is the biggest file that we're going to end on probably going to see a hundred percent spike immediately unsurprising there but again the drive store pro from acer store it's a modest NAS, and I think it's actually performed quite admirably. I do think if you were looking at transcoding of high-end 4K and 1080p, you should have been looking at an Intel-based processor anyway. But for native playback, I would recommend um, the DriveStore Pro 4 for native 4K H.264 transcoding. Um, but when it comes to H.265 4K and 1080p, stick to the native applications because they do report that um, if you use uh, looks good and playback 4k that cpu with its native access from the system itself the bare metal um, to software connection means that this will play back significantly better thank you so much for watching click like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to learn more and if you do need any more help with the plex media server that you want to buy uh, trying to get the best for your budget, your data storage requirements, anything like that, take advantage of the free data storage uh, advice in the description below. It's myself and Eddie the Web Guy. It's a free advice service. We advise on everything to do with data storage and uh, network tech, and it's completely free. We don't ask for any money. We don't even use your email for anything else. It's just use the boxes below in the description at NAS Compares. Fill them out. Give us your query. It might take us a day or two to respond to you. We are two human beings with two limbs each. Two limbs? Uh, four limbs, two arms each, uh, and, and lives. So it may take us an extra day or so to answer your email, but we will answer every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.